save 10% with my code BOBBY10. Just kidding guys, today's offer is much greater than a saving of 10%. I teamed up with my Muslim brothers and we created Pure Passage. Imagine sending the reward of Umrah this Ramadan to someone you really loved but had already departed from this dunya. Or they're really sick and they cannot perform Umrah at all. Imagine the feeling of honoring his or her memory and expressing your love and devotion while still ensuring that they receive this gift. The reward of performing Umrah. As a new revert, I just learned about this, but you know better than me that performing Umrah is a profound spiritual journey that most Muslims aspire to undertake and you understand the rewards of it. However, for some, this journey can be challenging, especially when their loved ones are sick or have already passed away. At Pure Passage, we understand how important it is to fulfill this obligation for your loved ones. That's why we offer our professional and reliable service to perform Umrah on behalf of your sick or deceased parents, spouse or any other relatives. We believe that everyone should have the opportunity to fulfill this sacred act even if they are unable to do so themselves and equally understand that the physical and financial challenges of performing Umrah yourself on behalf of your loved ones can be overwhelming. That's where Pure Passage comes in. We take care of everything and make sure that your loved one's Umrah is performed with the utmost care and attention to detail. So let us help you earn this immense reward for your loved ones by performing Umrah on their behalf. Contact us today and let's make it happen. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to react to Valuetainment, where Patrick Bat David interviews Majid Nawaz. The video is called This is Bullshit Reasons Why the Islamic Faith is the Fastest Growing Religion. So I know I'm a bit late to the party and Patrick Bat David already made comments about Islam and how it is the fastest growing religion. And I got the impression that he as a Christian coming from Iran during the revolution was a bit worried about that. But today he's interviewing a Muslim firsthand. So I'm very curious about this exchange. With no further ado, let's have a look. You won't find much traction in that demographic that's growing among Muslims, which is going to become a very large demographic, you won't find much traction for the idea that men with penises are women, for example. Bigot! So there's a lot to be oh, hopeful about. How dare you? A lot of this woke crap, am I allowed to swear on this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the bullshit has no traction in Muslim communities. Nor did the COVID mandates, by the way. Some of the biggest opponents of this whole mandate era it were- It doesn't in the Muslim community. That's right, yeah. Why not? Again, I have to interrupt right there and the impression that I got during my time researching Islam during COVID, I didn't see so many proponents in the Muslim community that were against the mandates, that were against the vaccines. I didn't see much there. However, in the Orthodox Christian community, there was a lot of resistance. So I was a bit disappointed that many famous Muslim YouTubers actually took the shot. Again, back to this point. When you all... When you all tuned out of the bullshit, which is the data tracking, the the, 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 the the matrix illusion that we all live in. When you're just with people, none of this propaganda, you know, I just spent a whole mo month in a in a mosque every single night because of Ramadan. Uh, praying, uh, not just the five daily prayers and not just the special Ramadan evening prayer, which is the Taraweeh prayer, but also the Tahajjud prayer, the night prayer. Every night, just wow. leaving my phone at home, speaking to people. I can promise you out there in Muslim communities, the, the, the numbers you mentioned, whether it's in Pakistan, whether it's in Indonesia, there's because they are so tuned out of this propaganda, and that's the reason why, again, has years of ex history behind it, you know, not trusting Western propaganda and all that because of colonialism. There's a long history there, but because they're so sure. tuned out in the real world where people are talking and mixing with each other. The fine tuned out. Uh, not dependent for their perspective of uh, uh, around life on the very narrow um, uh, sources of information that we have ended up with in 
uh, in our discourse. And COVID demonstrated that in, in the way in which our sources of information were so minutely controlled. These are communities that have, because uh, let's take Pakistan as an example with vaccinations. Uh, as Vox reports, you can pull it up if you want, but the CIA in its hunt for bin Laden engaged in a fake hepatitis B vaccine program against children using the cover of vaccines to try and take people's DNA against their will by deception, uh, looking for bin Laden. That got revealed, which as I say, it's on a Vox, V-O-X. That got blown up. The CIA had to apologize Conspiracies. For it. But when you've got a history of abuse like that, nobody trusts the messaging in the first place to say, take this shot or you're going to lose your job. Everyone has, their starting point is you're all a bunch of liars. So when you're tuned out in that way, what you've got left, you've got no money, it's a developing world. You've got no power. What you've got is relationships. <clears throat> and your relationships are the only thing that matter. As anyone with a Middle Eastern background will know the idea of, um, in Pakistan it's called Safarish, but the idea of it's who you know. You have to know people, your family, your tribal members, even to get on in life. Because the system doesn't work. Mm -hmm. The system has never worked for a long time. So it's the relationships that matter. Now, in that context, you've got no time for the bullshit the propaganda. So there's no traction for this. Uh, these woke culture wars. There's absolutely zero traction but, but for the like, vaccine mandate. Yeah, the question here is as well, how much of this woke culture war is truly going on in the real world? Because if I look around, I don't see any of it. And I lived in many different places, be it in Europe, be it in Asia, be it in Australia even. I see it in the media. I see it being pushed onto us but I don't see it really happening. There are not as many trans people out there as the media wants you to believe are being oppressed. This is of course a fabrication, social engineering behind it. And you see even studies show that social anxiety is rising due to social media. How hilarious is this? Social media actually makes you anti-social. Of course, because you're staying within your own bubble and you're projecting those fears onto society, even though they don't exist. It is amazing to see. And this is why I don't doubt this at all. If you spend the whole month in the mosque without your phone, you're resetting yourself. You're returning back to normality. But, but, but it has to be because somebody at the top shuts it down. Yeah. Because if the person at the top doesn't shut it down, then there can, there can be traction. Okay. You know, it, it, there, there's a part about, uh, uh, so if you want to pull up these stats, I just send it to yeah. you with the whole percentage of um, uh, go a little lower, go a little lower, go a little lower, go keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, let me see if this is the link. Percentage of Muslims who support gay is this article that I found. Yeah, I was just going to go. If you can go to that one. And it says by age. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you see. Okay. Uh, I, I didn't send you this link. I sent you a different link. I sent you the Pew Research link. Maybe I sent you the wrong link. Okay, let me send you this one. If you can pull this up. <laughs> yeah. It says percentage of um, Muslims who strongly favor gay marriage. Mm. Okay. Uh, 18 to 29, yeah. 49%. Yeah. 30 to 49, that. 38%. Where's that? In America? This is pure research. Yeah, but who's yeah. being, is it Muslims in America? So this is Muslims. How do we believe those things even? <laughs> Age distribution among Muslims who strongly favor or favor gay marriage. Yeah, sure. I'm absolutely convinced that this is legit. They certainly interviewed all the Muslims in the world, as they just mentioned, in Pakistan, for example, somewhere in a remote area in Africa. Certainly they did. Man, who did they interview here? Unfortunately, there is no link otherwise I would look it up how many people did you interview maybe they interviewed 100 people and now they're coming to a percentage out of 10 people maybe four people said yes I'm in strong favor of gay marriage and I'm a Muslim congratulations then you already have 40% this is bogus strongly favor or favor gay marriage sure. okay no, percentage of Muslims who strongly favor or favor gay marriage. All the Muslims. Or ages. This is a table. On that note, guys, please post in the comment section if they interviewed you. Margins there. Let's see. Comes a question. It doesn't say if it's America. So yeah. Let's just assume it's America. I imagine it would be. 50 yeah. To yeah, 60, those numbers don't 50 make sense. To 64, for the 50 to 64 yeah. age, 11%. 65 plus is 2%. Yeah. How different is this in Muslim nations? Very different. Give, give us an idea. It would be the opposite. You'd be you'd be seeing the exact opposite. Right there on the uh, chart. If you see, I mean, okay, just a survey. Just survey which countries are, are legally allow in Muslim majority countries where this is a uh, a legal 
where the definition of marriage has changed from being between a man and a woman. In Muslim majority countries, I don't think there's any any really uh, traction for this idea. But I which think, which Muslim countries is gay marriage legal? I don't. I can't think of one. Man, <laughs> what do you listen. Think? I'm living in Thailand at the moment. Thailand is the ladyboy capital of the world. Not even in this country is gay marriage allowed. <laughs> what do you think about that? I, I, look, for they me, always make it about this Muslim is countries. a human, a human issue. I don't think we should have to change the definition of what marriage is to have sympathy for people that have same-sex attraction. I think that there's a, there's a, a lot of crossing of lanes here, uh, which I think has been largely responsible for some of the mess we now find ourselves in where, where, where men are saying they're women. Uh, I think tradition is important. It needs to be respected and maintained. There's a reason in tradition, marriage is between a man and a woman. Uh, civil unions and civil partnerships are something else. I'm not... Uh, into in any way persecuting minority identities. Uh, my interest is to make- Yes, it's absolutely correct. The bond between a man and a woman in a holy setting, be it in a church, be it in a mosque or what not, in a religious institution is between man and woman. Yet again, men and men cannot get married under a religious institution, or at least they couldn't up until now once people started twisting scripture. But ultimately it really makes you wonder why in a liberal country countries such as the United States, those gay people want to get married traditionally. Why? You're already not a traditional human being any longer because you do not adhere to the traditional values of marriage. You do not adhere to that. So why do you want to be part of it? I really don't understand. If you look at jujitsu, for example, you have a sport that is practiced in two fashions, once in a gi and once in no gi. But now I come around and I say, hey guys, I don't want to wear a gi and I don't want to wear no gi. I want to wear a BDSM gimp suit. This is what I want and this is how I want to train here guess what they would kick me out of the gym because i do not belong in that environment i do not belong in that setting because i do not adhere to their value system it is that simple so this is just a hijacking onto traditional values if you want to have with a man as a man in a liberal country you can already do that you don't need to get married for it sure that unbelievable tradition as well is preserved and not tinkered with, because what we've seen of late with the woke culture wars, and said we'd come to the trans thing, and maybe we can go into it here now, is the absurdity of this all becomes apparent. When you start, there's, tradition is there for a reason, and the wisdom that underpins a lot of our traditional perspectives, in time you can begin seeing, especially as you become older and become a parent. And sure, you start playing with that um, wisdom. As I say, the absurdity becomes apparent now. There is no, uh, there is no reason other than a respect for tradition and, and a recognition of reality, which is what tradition is, I believe, and the wisdom that is underpinning tradition is based on. Um, there is no reason other than that to object to a lot of this madness. The, the reason I object to this madness is I say that this, we as human beings have existed here on this planet for so many thousands of years, and along you come and think that you can that you, you've suddenly found an answer to these questions and the answer is that I can identify however I want. I, I, sorry, but I don't think that you have the accumulated wisdom of generations of human beings on this planet. Yes, absolutely. And this argument holds true dietarily as well. For example, the vegan claim, we don't have to eat animals. At the same time, they do believe in evolution and they believe that the world is millions and billions of years old. So what have we been doing? We've been eating animals and hunting and eating animals made us the successful species. And out of a sudden, we should stop doing that. Yes, go vegan, everybody. Let's eat eat broccoli. Let's just stop what made us successful in the first place. The same applies here, of course. Traditional family values. This made nations strong. This made the family strong, healthy. This was productive. But now let's stop it. Let's chop off our pee-pee and dance with a rainbow flag. Intersex that will fix people it. have, have had yes. trans identities. People that have had same-sex attraction have always existed in these yes, societies. Always. And if you go to um, Pakistan, as an example here, if you go to Lahore, and if you go to the Badshai Masjid, which is one of the big, most beautiful mosques in Lahore, around that Badshai Masjid was the traditional red light district of the Mughal emperors. Oh, wow. uh, because a lot of the concubines and others would live around the court. And Interesting. The, in Pakistan, there's a very old tradition of um, 
men that would come to weddings and dance and they would be dressed up as women. And in order oh. the common parlance for this is kusre. Yeah. And uh, That's it's weird. not, uh, you know, the, the idea of the trans identity in a traditional Muslim society is not, um, it's not alien. But what, what never happened was that you take that phenomenon, which was, they weren't, you know, of course there are challenges with uh, how they're treated and that needs to uh, improve in every case. But what never happened was you take that identity which has existed there for a long time and now you want to start tinkering with tradition by changing uh, the norms and the customs and the legislation upon which those, exactly uh, right. those, uh, those norms and customs exactly lead to right. by saying that I'm going to now change the definition of marriage. Yes. So they, they were there and they've always... It is as if we're talking about a dog. A dog, generally speaking, has four legs with paws. Sure, I'm certain you saw a dog with three legs or even a dog with two legs, but that doesn't make it the norm. A dog, generally speaking, yet again, has four legs, has a tail, etc., etc., you name it. You can define a dog. And this is why what he says here is crucial. You had those transgenders throughout history, but it never was the norm. But this is the push now. Nowadays, it is a push onto society that everything goes and everything is to be respected accepted as the norm and moreover they want to tell you that there is no gender any longer so there is no male and female there is whatever you want it to be by that they're telling you that there is no right and wrong that there is absolutely no standard for anything any longer and you can pick and choose this is an infiltration of the traditional mind and a destruction of truth period Truth with a capital T. Because if they can make you believe that there is no man and no woman, that there is no biological gender, you can fall for anything after that. If you can look at a man and somebody can convince you that this is not a man, even though subconsciously, consciously, you know that this is a man, you're absolutely screwed now. Now you're going to fall for everything. And like that, they're taking you away from God, of course, because you do not believe in an ultimate objective truth. Now subjectivity reigns and whatever feels good to someone is the truth then. If you feel like a unicorn, you can be that. If you feel like a pizza, you can be that. It does not matter anymore. Like this, you create moral relativism and out of that springs nihilism. With nihilism, you destroy a society. But there's a reason that, that tradition has led to this idea that marriage is, is between man and woman. I think, and I think that's how it should stay. That, it's also slippery slope, right? Because uh, you said that's how I think it should stay. Yeah. Is what you're saying? Marriage, okay. marriage, yeah. Marriage yeah. between a man and a woman. Yeah. That's how it should stay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, 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 today going. you'll hear uh, guys coming out, and you know we talked about this with Tate. Andrew Tate says, look at Christians. You know, they're compromising their values and principles. He says, you know why I'm a Muslim? Because they don't compromise their values and principles. And he's, he's got a big audience. And his audience is who? 16 to 35 years old, yeah. okay? Yep. Which is the audience that is typically afraid, angry, disappointed, heartbroken, moldable, shapeable, recruitable. His audience is the audience that is a shapeable audience, right? Yep. Yep. It's the audience the U.S. government wants to have because... The sooner you get to them through educational system, whatever, maybe you have them for the rest of your life, and you already know how they're going to be voting for you, you got them for the most part, right? Yeah. Okay. What, what, why do you think uh, the, the Christian religion is caving in where they're sitting there and saying, well, you know what? It's okay. You know, yeah. let's just compliment. It's okay. And, and I know you don't have the answer to it. It's not like it's like I'll give you I'm looking answer. for definite. I can give you an answer coming from an Orthodox Christian background. I would say that Orthodox Christianity still preserves those values the best. However, when the schism happened roughly a thousand years ago, this is when the church split in two. And from there on, it kept on splitting, kept on falling apart. The main body of the church has been destroyed. And like that church, true Christianity is not to be found anywhere any longer. I still, to this very day, even though I reverted to Islam, make the claim that the true traditional Christianity is only found within Orthodox Christianity. Anything else is a deviation and will lead to absolute destruction. And this is where I want to reach out to the Orthodox Christians as a former Orthodox Christian myself. I know many of you see me as a traitor, but I really want to further Orthodox Christian and Muslim relations. 
nations because I believe that together as an allegiance we can fight this degeneracy off. An I'll answer give, of your I'll opinion. Give you, I'll yeah. give you an answer. Um, and, and by the way, do you think it is a mistake clergy's making? Do you think it is a make, mistake the Christian church is making? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, an answer, and it's not even a Christian and, and church Before anymore. I give the an answer that I'm saying, to make it clear, I'm married to an American who was raised in Catholic school. My mother-in-law is a practicing Catholic who visits church every Sunday uh, and for all the uh, occasions such as Christmas and what have you. Um, and so I am familiar on a, in a family sense with um, Catholicism and my remarks are in no way meant in any way to disparage any faith tradition. Uh, but an answer to your question, I believe, is back, it, got, it comes back to the nature of uh, in institutions, in this case, clergy. When you have, as I say, every institution becomes corrupted and it drifts to more and more power. We saw that in the church. So the pedophilia scandal isn't confined to Epstein. It existed in the sure. church as well. Of course. Now, what was Epstein? So Whitney Webb's written a book, One Nation Under Blackmail. It's a two-volume book worth having a look at. Um, I interviewed her for my The Radical Show, um, which uh, basically we had a whole season and then um, <laughs> it was on Odyssey. And Odyssey's parent company was Library. And the SEC, um, the Securities and Exchange Commission, under Gary Gensler, enforced against Library while not enforcing against uh, FTX. And so Library had to shut down. And so... Uh, uh, Ra Odyssey, the platform still exists, but Radical, the show, couldn't carry on. But we had Whitney Webb on that show, and, and that's an example. One Nation Under Black Mail's her book. And it, it goes into how the entire Epstein operation was for the purposes of acquiring compromat on senior political leaders yep. so that once you have that compromat or compromising material, you can have them do your bidding at risk of sure. exposing what you know about them. No, they have don't. to do whatever you want them so to do. So take what we know about Epstein. Otherwise Epstein they're going to get exposed. One of his um, of course. former handlers, is, it's all there in the press. In fact, in the British newspaper, The Sun, you've got an interview with one of them saying, I was Epstein's Mossad handler, and the reason we were doing this was to try and force politicians with the compromat we had to do our bidding. But that's how political blackmail works. So to your question, what happened in the church? If you've got a whole bunch of shit on a whole bunch of priests doing a whole bunch of crap with kids, you can have them do your bidding. And you can hijack the institution from within. In the UK with the Church of England, um, I think the man's um, Welby, uh, the head of the Church of England in the UK has recently come out and said the same thing. He's like, yeah, you know, it's fine. This trans stuff, this gay stuff, it's all fine. So the question becomes, mm. if you can corrupt the institution from the top and the but guidance But we had a quote-unquote Muslim in Scotland claiming the same thing. He's saying this is all fine. Unfortunately. Or... In the case of the Catholic Church, you've got priests who are uh, disabled from doing much against it because themselves are compromised. The institution itself Surely. becomes disabled. It is unable to respond. It's a bunch of them in the Catholic Church. And again, the advantage of, an, of a li more libertarian approach to a direct relationship with the source or Allah. Again, we've defined what we mean by the word Allah. This is not a, you know, a Muslim-only thing. Um, if you have a direct relationship with Allah or the source, uh, you can always outflank the attempt to hijack any given institution because your uh, your faith tradition doesn't rely on that institution for guidance in the first place. That's so. so imagine, let me ask you a question. So what? Uh, I, I agree. Yeah. The it's, it's, okay. So he based it on the clergy. I would go further, as I said already. I believe it is due to the church being compromised in the first place. The main body of the Christian church was the Orthodox Church. From there out on, you had a splitting further and further. First the Catholic, then the Protestant, and what not. And this way, you have such a weak fundament. Christianity got liberalized, and through that, they invited everything in. It's getting crazy. They're growing by the day. It's getting to, to me. It's getting out of control. Why do you think such a small minority group is is getting like protected and probably you can't like if anybody talks negative against them, you're canceled, you're done, you're finished. How are they to getting kill this truth. much power? That's why yeah, right. well, so this truth. is deliberate. Uh, these culture wars yes. are being stoked on purpose to avoid us having these conversations about one nation under blackmail, about globalism, about technocracy, about the, the yep. uh, attempts that are still undergoing right now to securitize the entire planet and, and put us under this dragnet. Uh, this technocratic uh, dragnet where we are all digital slaves. Uh, and that should be Correct. the most important topic right now. The World Health Organization is currently, as we speak, passing amendments 
to the International Health Regulations amendments. Those amendments to the International Health Regulations stipulate that the head of the World Health Organization, Tudros, who I believe, by the way, uh, there is also some questionable footage of in various private uh, scenarios. Now, Tudros, who's the head of the World Health Organization, through these amendments, which will pass without a vote because all of us, our countries, are signatories to the World Health Organization, so the amendments to the International Health Regulations don't need a vote. Once those amendments pass, the World Health Organization can declare a global health emergency and impose all of their measures from a from on uh, uh, on top centrally, mm -hmm. and they won't need the government's uh, 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 cooperation to do so. So we've got efforts afoot right now as we speak to securitize our uh, health policy around the world and synchronize it all in one globalist technocratic uh, tyranny. And meanwhile, yes. uh, we are fighting over... As you saw during the pandemic, no matter what the World Health Organization claims becomes the truth. What a woman is. And I think that that's being deliberately stoked so yeah. that we're looking over here and not looking up. Like I, diversion tactic. like Look left and right, don't yeah. look up. And I, I obviously you, you have to address it because somebody going into a female changing room and you, or a prison where as a rapist who suddenly identifies as a woman and gets put into a female wing, yeah. you have to address it because it's a clear and immediate problem. Yep. But while you're addressing it, this is all going on up here. Wow. So I often say to people, look up. We have to look up and understand what's going on. This is being deliberately funded. Back to the money point, these culture wars are being stoked and funded on purpose. The rise of this <coughs> Bud Light character. Yeah, Notice it happened after they met Biden. Yep. Right? It's all planned. All right, guys. This is it for today's video. It's very long, so I'm going to cut it off here. Just a few last words. I absolutely agree with him here. It is, of course, about globalism. It is, of course, about the technocracy, aka transhumanism. This is the agenda that has been pushed. Unfortunately, I cannot talk freely about this here on my channel. So please check out the links in the description box. I talk about this partially on Telegram, partially on Patreon, and God willing, in the future, more on Rumble. I I used to talk about this here on YouTube. However, all of those videos have been deleted. And this just confirms, of course, our suspicion, our assumptions here, that there is a greater agenda at hand. A push to destroy traditional values, a push to destroy true religion, a push to destroy gender norms, a push to destroy truth in general, to take you away from what is right and wrong. A society based upon nihilism, a society based upon whatever feels good, whatever works for you, bro, a society based upon lies, ultimately, a society that will tell you that there is no objective truth, a society that tells you that there is no objective morality, but at the same time tells you you shouldn't eat meat because it is so, so evil, a society that doesn't believe in good and evil, in right and wrong, but somehow, if you don't adhere with their mandates, then you are the evil one. This is the confusion that they are spreading, they're trying to get you away from your natural predisposition. They're trying to get you away from what it means to be a human being. And if they accomplish that, when you are not a human anymore, when you don't know what is right and wrong, when you don't know what a man or woman is, what do you mean? I have no idea. I'm not a biologist. Then they can steer you like a puppet. You don't know what is right and wrong anymore. They can use you for their agenda. Now you're so extremely confused, so gullible, that you will just eat everything up that they present to you. And of course, as a solution to your suffering, they're offering you antidepressants. They're offering you a neural link now. Listen to our Lord and Savior, Elon Musk, and implant the chip into your brain. You're still not happy? Then listen to our other Savior, Klaus Schwab, and eat the bugs. Their agenda only works by dehumanizing you. So return to Islam and become human again. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. Long one, as I said. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support my work via Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.